I usually like to let a game sit for a while before I do an in case you missed it about it. Partially, that's to make sure that, well, people actually miss it. But it's also usually pretty hard to miss a game in its initial launch window. It'll usually take a little while for people to forget about it, and I like to bring it back up to remind people about it. But sometimes there are games that are pretty clearly immediately missed, and with countless desperate temporary price cuts and a recent introduction to Game Pass, Onrush has very rapidly and clearly become a game that people are ignoring. I bought Onrush near launch on PS4, but recently I've picked the game back up again on my Xbox One due to the Game Pass introduction in hopes that the population of players might be slightly higher because of it, which it seems to have done an okay job of at this point. But before we get too deep into talking about the game's lack of players, let's talk about the game itself. Onrush's core conceit seems to come from looking at the shooter genre and seeing that the most successful shooters these days have moved away from simple deathmatch modes. The most popular shooters right now are games like Rainbow Six Siege, Counter-Strike GO, Overwatch, and of course, PUBG and Fortnite. Some of these games have a deathmatch mode as an afterthought, but it is not the main focus for any of them, and players are definitely gravitating towards them more and more, and less towards games that put a heavy emphasis on more traditional modes like Team Deathmatch, and really popular games of the past, like Call of Duty, are scrambling to try and keep up. Onrush takes that shooter trend and basically posits the question, what if we applied that to driving games? What if we made an objective-centric driving game? After all, most driving games are still pretty exclusively focused on racing. That is, beating all the other cars to the finish line. Better yet, why don't we throw in some different classes of vehicle, all with different abilities? And they definitely went all in, coming up with a selection of modes and a wide variety of different classes. Like anything, some of them work and some of them very much don't, but on the whole, it's pretty inventive and fun. When it comes to game modes, there's Overdrive, which basically just requires you to use up as much boost as you can throughout the event which you can generate by taking down other drivers or NPC cars the game calls fodder, or performing stunts or other precisely executed driving. Think about how burnout rewards boost, and it's a little easier to understand. The more you use boost, the higher your team's score goes. If it gets to 10,000 before the other team, you win the round. There's also switch, which makes you swap vehicle classes throughout the matches you die, there's Countdown, where you race through as many rapidly spawning gates as you can, and there's Lockdown, which functions basically as a mobile king of the hill. I do like Overdrive the most of the game modes, but I've had fun matches in all of them, at least when there's a full group of people in the match. So now we have to circle back to where we started, the lack of players. Onrush does have a single player mode, and it's relatively entertaining, though it isn't particularly challenging. It's a good place to learn the ropes or just have some relaxing, easy games against the AI. But when you really want to have fun with Onrush, you need other people, which is, of course, a problem, when apparently hardly anyone bought this game. If a match doesn't have enough real people in it, some AI bots are added, but they're not always added in a balanced way, and frankly, I feel like they somewhat cheapen any success your team might find, because if you got there by simply taking advantage of the rudimentary AI, it hardly feels like that much of a victory. So while I think this game is a whole lot of fun and really deserves more attention than it's gotten, I definitely have some reservations about making a full-throated endorsement of Onrush, simply due to the fact that it's really only at its best when there's a full match of other real people. And while Game Pass seems to have helped out with that on the Xbox, I don't know if it's going to last, and I still have trouble finding full matches over on the PS4 side of things, especially during off-peak hours. Still, if you have Game Pass and can pick this one up without any upfront cost, I absolutely recommend doing so. On In Case You Missed It, I look at games that I feel have been unfairly ignored or forgotten by time. Games that really deserved better than they got. 
If you like that idea, be sure to subscribe so you can see the latest videos. If you like this video in particular, be sure to hit that like button, and thanks for watching.